Let's imagine that a population is very small, let's say just four individuals. And in the first generation, they're all heterozygotes, right? They're all big A, little a. So let's also say that these four individuals have four children among them due to random mating. Is it possible that all four of those children end up with big A, big A alleles? Of course it is. Right? You can use the binomial theorem from early in the semester to compute the probability that this will happen from one generation to the next. I haven't written that equation up here though, because I want you to focus on what comes next. When these children mate, what alleles will the next generation have? They will also all be big A, big A. This random event has reduced the amount of genetic variation in this population. We say that now the big A allele is fixed while the little a allele has been lost. In a small population, alleles being fixed or lost over a short number of generations is very common. For example, I simulated 10 different populations of four individuals who all start out heterozygous. And after these 10, uh, these, uh, 10 generations, three of them, in three of them, the big A allele had become fixed. And in another three of them, that big A allele had been lost. And of course, this is a major problem in conservation genetics. Right? If the number of individuals in a species is quite small, then the genetic diversity is rapidly lost. And the problem is even worse than simply a decrease in genetic diversity because oftentimes the different genotypes are not equally fit. If an allele is damaging to the reproductive fitness of a homozygote, then this loss of genetic diversity can rapidly accelerate. We'll discuss fitness and selection next.